Hey, this is John. Thanks for joining me for this video today. This video is going to take a quick look at the weathering that I did on this Adeptus Mechanicus Scorpius Disintegrator. I've been working on this thing for weeks and I still have to stop and think before I can say the full name. Anyway, it's, uh, it's, it's a vehicle from the Warhammer 40k universe and I, I don't play the game but I love the models and I really liked this one because it just looks so darn cool. Now, there's a link down below in the description to part one of this series where I talk about assembling and getting the base paints on and all of that. For this video, all of the base paints are on and I'm just going to be doing a kind of a quick uh, high-level flyover of the weathering, um, that, which I put quite a bit of weathering into this. Um, but when you, when you see the video, you'll see it's really just a lot of simple steps layered up on top of each other and I think that's what gives a good depth of finish uh, to any model is just lots uh, lots and lots of layers of weathering which which makes it I think look more realistic um, and more more plausible which I think is more important because the two are different and uh, it, it helps take it further than just you know getting some Tamiya weathering powders and smearing them on with your finger or something so anyway um, now, if you're wondering why I'm not showing the model before all the weathering, well, I forgot to film that part. And uh, so it's actually finished up sitting over here to my left. And uh, I'll just, I'll just uh, say, before I started, it was red with some white and some decals. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and, and thanks for watching it. I started the weathering process with this MIG Productions Dark Wash. Um, it's just a good dark enamel wash. I thinned it down fairly heavily and just started flowing it into the panel lines. I wasn't trying to be particularly neat. I didn't gloss coat the model beforehand or anything like that. I was okay if the color bled out a little bit. Um, that's what I wanted because I wanted that to serve as a foundation for some of the weathering. Um, sometimes you want your panel lines to be nice and neat and and everything looking precise but sometimes you can take advantage of the little bit of bleed that you get if you see there on the right in front of that vision port I was going to use that later on for weathering and once I had all of the panel lines uh, uh, darkened in I just went in as this close-up shows and with a brush damped with odorless thinner I just began the process of cleaning up the the excess that was around the model. Now you may think you know that would take a long time. It only took me about half an hour uh, to clean up the whole model. So it's not a long process. Now I wanted to start with some chipping so I went with this Citadel Wild Rider Red. Um, this represents the the light level of chipping that just just kind of scratches the surface of the paint. And while this may not be the most realistic color to use um, it, it sells the notion of chipping. It's plausible. And more importantly, there's, there's some contrast there. That's what I'm going for uh, when I use uh, such a color like this, is I'm going for contrast so you can see it. And here, I just, I just went in with the sponge and began putting in chips where I thought they should be. The sponge gives it a nice random look. So um, I use it quite a bit. You can do brush painting. I just like the speed of the sponge uh, that it provides. Uh, when I'm adding the chipping to the model. I did go in and add some brush painted chips. These are really good for streaks and um, scrapes and filling in areas where the brush or rather where the sponge painting um, uh, you know left some areas that looked like it could be developed into a larger chip. So I just ran around the model and and added these in. Uh, you had to be careful not to get get too far, go too far with it. Uh, you can look like, as Lincoln Wright often puts it, a uh, little line of ants walking along the model. So do be careful there, but just using a real fine brush will give you some pretty good results. I wanted to add a second layer of chipping uh, using this chipping brown from Vallejo Mechacolor. And this just represents a deeper level of chipping that goes down to whatever the underlying material is. And I used this brown color because I wanted to later go back in and add some rust tones to this. So it was beginning to develop the foundation of 
of uh, you know some oxidized material underneath the paint and that's why later rust would develop there you know if you were going to see this is more of a composite armor you might use a gray color or some kind of steel color something like that but like I said because I wanted to sell the notion of oxidization I just went in and uh, used this chipping brown color here uh, it's one of my favorites to use now to begin the earth effects I started with this uh, model wash uh, from Vallejo and I thinned it down and what I'm going to do here is just do some streaking now I could have done this with oils but I was wanting to get basically wanting to get the model done so I started doing some streaking with these acrylics and once they dry they they look like appropriate uh, streaking because I'm imagining this operating not only in you know maybe desert over over land kind of thing but also over water so I want to try and sell that, that there's streaks and stuff going on and you can see it it definitely does that it leaves some streaks behind um, it dries fairly thin you may have to put on multiple coats but I like the look that it imparts uh, to the model because it does definitely sell streaking now to go a little further I just used a different color to do the same kind of streaking the only adjustment I made in the application was that I did it uh, a little less um, I guess in terms of quantity I probably put about half as many streaks with this color as I did the other color now the it's going to be a subtle difference most people aren't going to notice the difference in colors but what I hope happens is that one being lighter than the other it just gives some slight tonal variation that will you know when somebody's looking at it their brain may not register here's a darker brown and a lighter brown but what their brain will register is that there are multiple things happening it's not just a single monotone color so uh, you know whether whether that actually comes through or not is, remains to be seen and you can see just those additional streaks they're still drying a little bit and I think it just gives it a nice look for rust tones I like to use several different colors and I thinned it down fairly heavily with airbrush thinner and glaze medium and you can see I've got three different tones here for my rust and I put those in my palette uh, basically one drop of the color and then two drops of the uh, glaze medium and two drops of the thinner and I just begin painting on uh, the rust stains because I wanted I really wanted to kind of exaggerate some rust here I'll be I'll admit it's a little heavier than I I really would have liked now that I look back at it um, I probably should have gone in with just a little finer brush maybe but I can live with it I started with the darker tone and just began adding it into the brown streak and streaking it down from there and basically building up the color until I had the quantity that I wanted and then as I, I went on I just began applying the mid-tone uh, and and you see this I did more of a stippling motion uh, in some areas I painted it on I extended the streaks the idea is that while you can overlap the darker tone just a little bit the idea that I had here was to go outside of the darker tone to look like um, where more rust has washed down and then eventually I got to uh, the lighter tone of rust and again just continued streaking and dabbing that in there and uh, simply trying to convey the look of okay there's been some damage here and it's heavily rusted you know it's operating in a caustic environment that kind of thing for the earth effects I mixed a little bit of uh, Vallejo pigments into uh, the earlier washes that I'd used and I thinned them down a bit and I like to just take this mix and add a little bit of the Lamian medium from Citadel now what this is is essentially paint without any pigment but it maintains the color it doesn't water it down it doesn't wash it down and then I just did some flicking off of this toothpick onto the model now you'll notice I did a few little test flicks uh, beforehand so that I could see the pattern and make sure that it was looking like I wanted now adding the pigments in means that once it dries they're gonna be a lot more stark uh, they'll show up a little more than it would if you were just using paint or, or rather the wash and and I wanted that I wanted something a little more obvious in terms of 
the the mud effects because I really do think that something that's a hovercraft is going to throw up a lot of mud uh, around the vehicle. So I really really went in and did this kind of heavy, but I did concentrate on the lower part of the vehicle uh, where the mud would be thrown up against it. And you can see how that looks. Uh, I, I think it sells the notion of mud quite well. I did go back later and tone it down just a little bit with some water just kind of brushing it down, but I like the way that ended up looking. I used neutral gray to do some uh, I don't know if you call it chipping or weathering or whatever around this this black portion around the bottom. I don't know if that's supposed to represent uh, a hard surface uh, such as you know something rubberized or uh, otherwise metallic or if it's supposed to be like a skirt on a traditional uh, hovercraft but I wanted to do something just to give that a little bit of a, a weathered chipped look give it some visual interest and just kind of bring out the shapes so that it's not just a solid black mass sitting up under the model and I thought it still needed a little bit of, of uh, some some color so I went in with a dry brush using the same color and my goal here was to get those those gaps between the black segments and just highlight those a little also. Plus it toned it down a little bit and I just thought it, it still sold the notion that okay here's something to look at, something that makes all of this work. And you can see when it was done it just provides some visual interest. Um, doesn't really explain what the material is but it says hey there's something here. Now a lot of the previous weathering I had done uh, covered up some of the initial panel line washes that I did. So I took some of this um, Ab Tai Lung 502 Starship Filth and put that on my little piece of cardboard and thinned it down. And what I wanted to do here was not re-panel line the whole thing, but go into the areas where there would be major shadows uh, underneath this gun port, for example, um, uh, where there's really sharp edges and areas that would get very dirty and you'll notice here that the paint is kind of thick the oil paint and I'm drawing it in kind of heavy because what I want to do is go back and blend this in later as you can see here and do some very definite streaking not just um, not just panel lining but real streaking going on here with most of the weathering done I just had to add all of the parts on if you're building this model, be sure and pay attention to the orientation of all the parts and the instructions. It will really help you out. Now I wanted to paint the exhausts and I used a method that I saw Martin at Night Shift Scale Modelers on his YouTube channel doing and I, I painted a, a lighter bluish gray color onto the exhausts as a base. Um, he, he had demonstrated this method on one of his models and I really liked it. And then I went in just with some thin Iraqi sand. I was just really looking for a, a tan color and very thin and just stippled some of that on simply to provide some warm tonal variation around the, the gray base that I had already established uh, that the colors would go over. Then I went back to my chipping brown and this I kept it a little thicker and I just painted on um, what's supposed to be areas of developed rust. Uh, the idea is that this is a metallic steel steely kind of color and then there's some rust developing on it and so I just simply painted in some streaks and stains and and other little little dots of color to represent rust uh, on the exhaust then I use this oil brusher from MIG uh, ammo of MIG and I just thinned that down and simply painted it directly on I didn't didn't try and stipple it on or just put it in certain areas just completely covered the exhaust and when it was done, while it's still drying here, when it was done, I really liked the effect. And so I think Martin's technique uh, is a really quick, simple way to get some kind of cool looking exhausts. All right, I think I'm ready to call this guy done. It is a really fun kit to build and paint and weather. There's just so many different angles and lines and greeblies and you know, wide open spaces for streaking and uh, I mean, I, I didn't do everything that I suppose you could do. You could imagine this having been in a more muddy environment and just have way more mud on it or if it would have been in water, just far more streaking um, 
it's just a super fun kit and it's it's definitely one of the most unique designs you'll ever find uh, for any kind of model you can build there's I've never seen anything that looks like quite like this now looking back at the build um, I wish now I would have done a little more to lighten up the base colors maybe with the airbrush uh, maybe a little bit of color modulation I think some of the color was was lost a little bit with all of the weathering steps because the weathering steps I put on did a lot to to make the overall tone a bit darker and uh, if, if I could go back and redo it that's that's the one thing I think I'd change um, is maybe just a little more highlighting and little little color modulation on some of the areas just to make it uh, pop a little more uh, when you get to this end state but I'm um, overall I'm, I'm really happy with with how uh, this guy turned out now there are different variants you can do of this um, it comes with several different guns to put up here I actually combined two this part here the, the back half of the gun is actually supposed to be one gun and then this forward part here is supposed to be another one and I was trying to decide which one to use and I thought hey why not just make it into one big old honking gun? So it's it's got quite a bit of a bigger gun barrel than than uh, the kit comes with. But there's different gun options for that. There's even in the box you can build another version that's more of a landing craft type thing where this this whole front end is different. It's got the top is opened up. You see the the cargo area in there. Uh, there's a couple of guys that operate these guns here. It's got a ramp that lowers down, so it looks very much like a, uh, a landing craft, a hovercraft kind of thing. So there's a lot of possibilities in the kit. Well, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate uh, if you're still hanging in here at this point of the video. Uh, that, that I'm grateful for, for uh, giving me a full watch. Uh, if you would be so kind as to click on the subscribe button down there somewhere, and there's a little bell icon. Uh, click on that, and that'll let you know when I've got a new video out. I would be most grateful for that as I try to grow this channel. There's also some links down there below uh, that, that are to the various social media uh, places that I inhabit. So if you're on one of those and not already following me, I would be most grateful if you would uh, consider following me there. And of course, there's a link to Patreon down there. And if you like the work that I do and you want to support uh, my efforts, I would be most grateful if you would take a look at what I offer there. It, it really does, uh, allow, it's what allows me to build uh, at the pace I do with and use the equipment and get all the things done that need to happen to make these videos happen and all the other stuff. Because we just couldn't afford uh, for me to do the the, the, the kits and the, the materials and things like that that, that I do uh, if it wasn't for Patreon. So uh, I would be most grateful if you would consider that. And if you're already a Patreon supporter, thank you so much <laughs> for, um, for doing that. My, my family and I are most grateful and recognize that at a time like this, um, when every dollar counts, it's, it's, a, it's especially nice to know that that y'all are supporting me in my efforts, and so I thank you very much. Well, if you've never built one of these Warhammer type kits before, I, I highly recommend taking a look at them. Um, they're a lot of fun, they're very different, they go together really well, there's no difficulty in assembly, and the sky's the limit as far as weathering and um, just whatever colors and weathering and everything, it's just, it's pretty much whatever you want. So I, I highly recommend them. There will be additional photos of this model on the blog, so check the link down below uh, and you can follow that link to, uh, to see more photos. And as I always do, I want to leave you with a final closing thought. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.